sing along with us. see you, uh, or at least be seen by you, uh, whether you are listening on our uh, conference call or whether you're watching on Facebook Live. Uh, hopefully, uh, you've already been made to feel welcome to this place and know that we're worshiping our true and living Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, hasn't it been a great two or three days, uh, just the weather outside, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, some troubling things maybe in our world tonight, but we certainly want to thank God for the weather uh, and for the breath of life even tonight. And so uh, typically what we do on Wednesday nights is we uh, have a time of mentioning of prayer request. Uh, but for the sake of time tonight, uh, I really want to get into the message of something I've been praying about preaching for the last two or three weeks. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm just, uh, I'm just kind of chomping at the bit to get to it. So what I'd like for you to do uh, we all have a prayer request, and we certainly don't want to leave anybody out. Um, I know we had several mentioned that are going to be new on our prayer list um, this week and some old concerns uh, and updates. So if you would, just put those into the comment section, and we will pray for those. Uh, you can make it as general as you want and make it just an unspoken, or you can make it as specific as you want. Um, and I promise you, um, the Christians that are on here will be praying uh, for that situation, for that circumstance, or for that person physical or spiritual uh, healing. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer before we begin our devotion tonight. God, once again, uh, we pray for uh, your uh, divine intervention in our service tonight. Um, God, we know that deciding to follow Jesus is the greatest decision that we could ever make uh, because God, it not only has consequences in this life, uh, but consequences in the next. And God, we want those good consequences, those uh, times to learn to be more like Jesus so we can treat others the way we should in this life. And then, God, for the afterlife, to be able to spend an eternity with you. Um, God, we know the only way is through Jesus and through the blood-bought sacrifice that he made on Calvary's tree. God, again, we pray tonight that someone would come to know you before it's everlasting too late. And, God, for the message that's to be preached tonight, God, may it be your words and your words only. And, God, that it would go and that the Holy Spirit would use it. Uh, to change us and to transform us into being more what you'd have us to be. For it's in Jesus' name I pray, and amen. I want to ask you tonight, how do you deal with adversity? Uh, adversity means the bad things that, that come into everyone's life. I know there's death and there's sickness. Uh, um, there's sins like drugs and alcohol, sexual sins. Uh, there's jealousy. There's hate. There's unfair treatment. There's all kinds of things that would be under the umbrella uh, of adversity. Do you um, people react different ways. Do you cry? Uh, do you get mad? Do you maybe do nothing? Uh, do you just lash out? Do you uh, want to quote unquote get even? Or do you just say whatever you want to say and do whatever you want to do um, that just happens to come to mind? Well, um, we have a problem in this country. 
Um, and I know uh, you might be saying, amen, we have, uh, we have a racism problem, or uh, we have a police brutality problem, or uh, we have a rioter problem, or we have whatever blank you, whatever you want to fill into that blank, we have uh, that problem in our country. What, whatever problem you say that we have in this country, it can be narrowed down to one cause and one cause only. And that cause is sin. Uh, and so I want to try to uh, fit these things together, this, this thought of adversity and this thought of sin uh, that's in our country that causes so many of these other things. So, so how do these fit together? How, how does handling adversity and the sin problem in our country have anything to do with each other? Well, I'm glad you asked uh, because the two fit together because the answer to both are found in one place. And that is the Word of God. Uh, tonight, what I want to do, I want to address what has been happening in our country and, and actually really in our lives for as long as we've been living and how we are to handle what is going on. Um, I think one of the biggest problems uh, is that we have been looking uh, in all of these places to find answers and to all of these people that say that they have the answer and they know what the problem is and they know how to fix it and all of these things, when really... It is the Christians who should be standing up and saying that the answer to all of our problems is found in the Word of God. We should have been looking there from the beginning. Uh, instead of looking at the author and finisher uh, and the creator of all things, we've been looking to all these people. And a lot of times we listen to whoever's talking. And, and that's a lot of times the way people are. But the people that should be talking are the Christians, and it shouldn't be with my opinion or your opinion. It should be the opinion of God, which is found in and only in the Word of God. You know, I have to tell you this. I've been praying over the, the last three weeks, ever since the, um, uh, the shooting happened in Minnesota. I've been praying, uh, what is it uh, that I should be saying over social media or from the pulpit? What is it as a Christian white man living in the United States of America, what should I be saying to lead or to move or to draw or to whatever God would have me to say in this time that's so desperate in our country? And after praying over this for several weeks now, the answer has to come from God's Word. It has to be the Word of God, and it has to be the Christians that are the ones showing people what the Word of God says. You know, most people think the problems of recent in our country stem from racism and, and police brutality and, and rioters, and, and, and you're not wrong. Uh, those are certainly huge issues and they're, they're problems, but the underlying problem is sin, and the answer to how to deal with sin is found in Scripture. Just like all adversity that comes into our lives, we should be looking to God and His Word to see how to deal with these things. And so I'm going to try to hurry the best I can tonight, but we're just going to search out God's Word, and we're going to talk about some of these issues, uh, and, and I hope that uh, no matter what color you are tonight, I pray that if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you're praying to God and asking Him who to lead you to to show what the Word of God says about some of these issues. Because uh, you might want to get your pencil, you might want to get a pen. Uh, you, you definitely have this to be able to look at uh, and to go back because it's going to be saved on social media. And so we want to see what the Word of God says about some of these issues and what our opinions should be based on the Word of God and based on the Word of God only. And so the first place I want to go to is Genesis 1, chapter, or excuse me, Genesis chapter 1 uh, and verse 26 uh, and 27. The first thing I think uh, that we need to realize uh, is that we are all made in the image of God. Did you hear me? We are all made in the image of God. And, and I, I need to say this with force, and I, I don't mean to say it mean, but I want to tell you that the Word of God is so clear on this. And we have to understand, as Christians, that we need to explain this to people that don't get it. Okay? And so this is what the Word of God says on verse 26 of chapter 1 in Genesis. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the 
fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. And so we see this very important part that God has created all men, all men in his image. And so that should change how we see each other. And let me just say something else. I think that there's not a single person, uh, even identical twins, there's not a single person who has been made exactly like somebody else. Uh, scientists say that every snowflake that's ever fall, every snowflake that's ever come from the sky, every one is individual. It's an individual crystal. And I think God's uh, plan for man is that we are all individual. And all of us look a little different, whether it's our skin tone or our eyes or our hair color or our shape, our build, uh, maybe male, maybe female, whatever that is, we're all uh, created differently, but we are all created in the image of God. And you might say, well, how is that important? Well, uh, in 1 Samuel 16, 7, when God was getting ready to anoint David as king, um, he told Samuel this right here. He said, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him, talking about the other brothers. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. And so maybe what Genesis, what he's talking about right there is when God said he created us in his image, it wasn't exactly from our visage, from the way we look at our face and our hair, but it's from the inside out. Because that's the way God sees all men and all women, all boys and all girls, from the inside out. He doesn't see color. He doesn't see how eyes or ears or skin tone. He doesn't see how tall you are or how short you are. God sees us. Um, at, from the inside out, and he knows, and we need to understand that we are created in the image of God. So the second point that I want to make tonight, and if you don't understand it from the first point that we are all made in the image of God, we need to understand racism is sin. Did you hear me? Racism is sin. Well, Brother Andy, show me that in the Word of God. I shouldn't have to show you in the Word of God. We just talked about how if we are all created in the image of God, then to think less of somebody else, and that's what racism is. And let me go even a little farther is, is to say prejudice. If we belittle somebody else who is a creator of God, what does that say that we're doing? It says that we're being sinners. Because we know that if we are created in the image of God, then all of God's creatures are precious. And it doesn't matter what color we are or what sex we are or how tall or how short or any of those other features that we talked about. We should not be considered or treated different because of how we look. Racism is sin. John 1 John 2, 9 says, He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. James 2, 9, But if you respect, but if you have respect to persons, that means if you prefer somebody because of who they are or, or what color their skin, it says ye commit sin and are con convinced of the law as transgressors. Romans 2, 11, For there is no respect of persons with God. That means he sees us all the same. And that's because he sees us from the inside out. And so we understand that we are all made in the image of God. They're not, and if we understand that, we understand that racism is sin. And the next thing that we need to understand uh, in the times that we're living in is that Jesus died for all men. Jesus died for everyone. Did he die just for the white man? No. I think the first the, the gospel message was first brought to the Jews, right? And I think if you look at the Jewish descent from Middle Eastern, they would probably be a darker skin with wiry hair. Jesus died for all men. The Gentiles, everybody that's not Jewish born, Jesus died for us too. 
And so we see and we know that Jesus died for all men. Romans 10, 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. That means everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't say only the black man that calls upon the name of the Lord or only the brown man that calls upon the name of the Lord or only the pale man and the white man or the yellow man or the red man. It says all that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 2 Corinthians 5, 14, For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then all were dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. That means that Jesus died for all men. He, he paid the penalty for your sin and for my sin by dying on the cross. And he, he was laid in a tomb. And three days later, he come back to life. And so we see here uh, that he died for all the sins of all mankind for all of eternity. That's important to understand, again, why racism is a sin. Because Jesus is for everyone. And so, so many places we can go uh, in the, the book of, uh, of, of the Lord to find out and see this picture. But the most simple, and from the first of, our, of the little kids that we teach anything about the Bible, John 3.16 is just as clear as anything, isn't it? Say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. That's everyone that's ever been in it. And because he loved us so much, he sent Jesus to die for you and for me. And so uh, Jesus died for all men. Uh, and so why do we have racism and hate in the world? Brother Andy, tell me that. Where does it talk about that in the Bible? Well, I'm going to have to tell you something. You can go all the way back to Adam and Eve. When Adam and Eve first sinned in the garden, um, one of the next things that Genesis talks about is they had a couple of sons. Uh, they had a couple of sons named Cain and Abel. And, and, and those of you that are wrestling fans out there, I'm not talking about uh, the professional wrestling world, okay? Uh, Cain and Abel were brothers. They were Adam and Eve's sons. Uh, and, and Cain got jealous of Abel uh, because of the offering to God. God accepted one and not the other. And Cain got so jealous, you know what he did? He killed his brother. And it was a sin. It was a sin to God then, and it's a sin now. And, and the Bible says in several places how the, the effects of sin, and it talks about it from cover to cover. It's probably the, the second uh, biggest theme in the Bible outside of love and, and the gift of Jesus Christ is the sin that the, the people of Israel had, uh, the sin of the pagan nations, the sin even in the churches in the New Testament. And so just a couple of places, Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Ecclesiastes 7.20, for there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. And so we have to understand that we are all sinners. And we have to try to explain to people that even though we are sinners, we've got Jesus, God's son, who died for our sins. And not only can you get saved by believing in him and get out of hell and into heaven, but then there's a new life. And the Bible says you become a new creature when that happens. And, and some of these this hate and some of these things that you have in the old nature and the old sinful man are put down and there's a new man and there's kind of like a, a new charge of your life and that is God and his Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. And so how do we defeat hate and racism and, and some of these other things that are sins, sexual sins that are rampant in our world, drugs and alcohol? How, how do we, the abuse of those things, how do, we, how do we beat those things for lack of a better word? Well, it's by first knowing who Jesus is and accepting him as his, as our Savior, and then after that, studying the, the life of Jesus and knowing God's mind and trying to be like Jesus. These people that do these things, I don't think many of them are claiming to be Christians. Now, I'm not saying that Christians don't sin. They do. 
But certainly the Christian has the Holy Spirit speaking to them in a still small voice trying to tell them right from wrong what to do and what not to do. Again, when you become a Christian, you don't stop sinning, but you certainly have that voice in your head. And if you're studying God's word, you're going to listen to that voice. And I'm going to listen to that voice more because we're trying to be more like Jesus every day. And so sin is the reason that we have to have police. Sin is the reason that we have to have laws. If there wasn't sin, there wouldn't be any crime. There wouldn't be any drunks. There wouldn't be any drug addicts. There wouldn't be any sexual criminals. There wouldn't be uh, any robbing or stealing or raping. There wouldn't be any of those things. But because of sin, we, we have to have laws. And when we have laws, we have to have people to enforce those laws. Now, the problem is that even police are still sinners, right? Even police we have that are not Christians that don't hear God and they don't study God and they don't try to be like Jesus. And they're, they're like anybody else. Now, they should be held to a higher standard. Do I believe that? I believe that. Now, that's not the word of God talking. That's, that's me talking, and, and maybe I shouldn't say that. But certainly, Christians, we all, the Bible says, as Christians, are going to be held to a higher standard because we know better. Do you hear me out there? As Christians, we should know better. And so what do we do? Everybody's got an answer, don't they? Everybody you talk to, well, they've got an answer, don't they? But again, where should our answers be coming from? Our answers should be coming from the Word of God. John 13, 34. This is a good place to start, folks. A new commandment I give you, Jesus says, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Now, he says that, Jesus, he says that, and if you're a Christian out there, there should be no prejudice, no racism uh, in your mind because our command is to love one another. And I can tell you something, it doesn't even have to be the color of your skin. In our house here at the Corbins, we have trouble loving each other sometimes, and we're family. In churches, we have trouble loving one another. Certainly, we're going to have trouble loving one another out in the real world when somebody is screaming at the top of their lungs against everything that we believe deep down inside is right. And so again, how do we love each other? Well, the only way that we can love each other is by first understanding the love that God has for us. We cannot have love for sinners and for lost people until first we understand how much God forgave and loves us. Romans 12, 17 through 19. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Folks, we don't have to worry about who, uh, what the score is. All we have to worry about is that God is the scorekeeper. He's the one that's going to avenge. He's the one that's going to do all the repaying. Our job is to try our best to love each other and to live peaceably with each other. Again, there is no way to do that outside the love of Jesus Christ. There is no way that that will happen. Because like I said, even with Cain and Abel, the first brothers on earth, one killed the other one. And I'm going to tell you, there wasn't a lot going on. You know, you didn't have a lot of different opinions back then. You had Adam, Eve, you had Cain and Abel, right? And so if it can happen then, it's still going to happen now because of sin. And the only way to keep these things from happening and to treat people the way that we're supposed to treat them is to love them like Jesus loves us. And we've got to practice that. It's easier said than done, isn't it? And so a lot of this uh, people, a lot of people see and, and are talking about rioters. Okay? And so let's, let's deal with that. Um, there's a difference, first of all, between rioting and, and people that are just meeting and gathering um, to protest. You know, the law is very clear on this. Protesting is legal, and, 
And, and as much as I disagree with uh, maybe somebody that's an atheist or somebody that uh, does something like that, I would fight for their right to be able to protest, to assemble peacefully. Now, again, I don't have to agree with them, but in our country, they have that right. And so the right to protest is, is a right given from our country. The right to riot is godless. There is no right to riot. It's a godless person that does that. Rioters, I believe, are godless people who have never been taught anything about God or his love for us. They don't know Jesus or his teachings because they were not taught or mentored by their parents. And, and so we've spent generations trying, and this is so important, folks. I, I hope that you hear this coming from me as a teacher because I think what we're seeing is, is we're reaping what we've sown. We've tried to kick God out of our schools and out of our government and out of our businesses and out of our families. We have mothers that are getting pregnant out of wedlock and there's no father in the home and, and there's no leadership in the home that leads people to God because that's the father's job and mothers are trying to raise kids and work and, and there's just so much, so much mess because God has been taking out of all that and now we're reaping what we've sown. And so the Bible speaks to this, and it's pretty scary if you understand where the Bible's coming from because it's talking about the last days. In other words, the last days before Jesus comes back and says, that's it. Let me tell you what Paul says to T uh, Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. He says, and tell me this doesn't sound like rioters and, and godless people. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, Covetous, covetous means jealous, wanting what others have. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, blasphemers mean blaspheming the name of God. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, that means homosexuality. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, that means lacking self-restraint, uncontrollable. Fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, that means violent. High-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having the form a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And the Bible says, from such turn away. Does that not sound like a lot of people in our world? And, and doesn't that sound like maybe some of those riders or, or even all of those riders? And I think that could be put in there. But again, it's our job as Christians to teach people the love of Christ. It's our job to go to that single mom. It's our job to go to that uh, deadbeat dad that's not being a father and try to lead them to Christ by loving them the best way we know how. And I, I don't have the answer for that, but I know what God's word says. And I know that as Christians, the message has not been getting to these people. And so we, we see this, and, and we've got to find a way to show people that Jesus is the way, and he's the right way, and he is the only answer that we have that's going to work. Trying to reform people without Jesus Christ, and I didn't, I didn't say this, I, I saw this from somebody. Trying to reform people without showing them the love of Jesus Christ is ludicrous. It's ludicrous. It's like trying to put a fire out by squirting at the top of the flame. You're not going to do it. You've got to squirt the water at the base of the flame to put out the fire. And so we've got to be telling people that there's a better way. And there's a man that died for them, the God man, Jesus Christ. And once we get them to understand who Jesus is and, and possibly get an opportunity to lead them to the Lord, then we can show them what the word of God says about what love really is. And how we should control ourselves and how we should act and how we should react. Not based on my opinion, not based on your opinion, but based on the opinion that's in the word of God. The only way we can combat sin, the sins of racism and hate and all the other sins that we're dealing with in our country is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I don't care what color you are tonight. If you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we've got to be better advocates. We've got to be helping further the kingdom. And we've got to speak peace through Jesus Christ. Not just speaking peace by concessions, but a relationship with Jesus is the only way to change a man's heart. 
We've got to understand that and we've got to make other people understand that. You know, I'm going to close with this. And you know, I believe Christians and our lives here on earth is practice for um, how we're going to treat each other in heaven. Um, you know, I, I believe in heaven, the Bible, what it says is true about there's not going to be uh, any more tears, no more sickness, no more death, um, and, and, and we're, going to, we're going to get along. Uh, there's not going to be the sins that separate us, the sins that, that hate on each other, the sins that we do, the trespasses that we commit to one another. There's not going to be that, that struggle with sin. And, and I love this verse in Revelation. And you can turn to this if you want to. Revelation 7, 9 through 10 says this. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, all kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne. Talking about the throne of God. And before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. That tells me that one day in heaven, all the Christians from all nations, from all walks of life, of all colors of skin, everyone who's trusted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, at one time, a number that no man can count, is going to stand around the throne of God and we're going to worship Him together. Are we going to sing? I hope so. Are we going to... Say, are we going to fall on our face? I don't know what all we're going to do, but we're going to be doing it together. And so, Christian out there today, you pray for your opportunity, as I've been praying for my opportunity to talk to people. And, 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 and I hope that you take this the way I want it to be taken, is that it shouldn't be my opinion and it shouldn't be your opinion. It should be the Word of God where we get all of our answers for all of the adversity <coughs> of life. God bless you. I hope you have a great night. And don't forget to pray uh, for our nation uh, and for our world and for God's kingdom uh, to be manifested in it. Thank you and I hope you have a great night.